travel to face the 0-2 Ravens on Sunday. The Ravens are in danger of falling to 0-3 for the first time in franchise history, but there is some good news for Baltimore. Andy Dalton has struggled in his career against divisional opponents, and no team has more interceptions against Dalton than the Ravens. He is only 11-13 career against the AFC North, while going 31-10-1 against the rest of the NFL. Stephen A., who wins, Bengals or Ravens? I got to tell you, the Bengals are the better team, Skip Bayless. And that defensive line led by Geno Atkins can give the Browns some problems, especially when your guy, when your guy Forsett, who was supposed to be the heir apparent to the Ray Rice era, had over 1,000 yards rushing last year, looked really, really good, is averaging less than four yards a carry right now. Their running game doesn't seem to be that impressive. Their passing game, even though Joe Flacco's completing about 64% of his passes, doesn't seem to be that great because they don't seem to have anybody other than Steve Smith to throw the foot ball to. Beautiful name, by the way. And then we get to the defensive side of the ball, and now Terrell Suggs is gone. So C.J. Mosley, Ladarius Webb, and those boys, they're going to have to get it together. They're going to have to do something. The, I have no reason to make this pick skip because the Bengals are clearly the better team. But this is at the Ravens. 0-3 will practically seal their fate. I just have too much respect for Ozzie Newsom, uh, for, for John Harbaugh and these boys, their history, their reputation, how they respond to such challenges, particularly in the regular season, knowing they have Pittsburgh up next, which could lead them to an 0-4 start. I, I just can't see that happening for those reasons, more so heart than head. I'm going to have to go with the Ravens to protect their home turf and finally put a win on the board for this regular season. Are we all missing the boat on the Cincinnati Bengals? That's of course we are. I mean, are, are they really that? I, I don't even have them in the playoffs they before are the good. year started. Uh, is it possible they they're just going to steamroll through the regular season and go 14-2 and two and have home field advantage all the way through the playoffs? Is that possible? It's possible. No, I, I, I think they could. I think they're more of a of eleven and five or twelve and fourteen, but still somebody who will lose the second the playoffs begin because Andy Dalton is allergic to production come postseason time. Well, occasionally he's allergic or has been during the regular season. They go way up and way down, and I'm going to guess that they will continue to ride this roller coaster this year. And I am with you. I believe in Ozzy and his ability to pick talent. And I believe in John Harbaugh as a head football coach. And I believe in that organization. And I don't think they're going to fall to 0-3. They got a tough schedule break. They had to go out west for their first two games and stay out west. They lost a very, very close game to Denver at Denver. And then they had a little hangover. And they didn't quite get ready enough for an Oakland Raider team that I said before the year is very dangerous and is going to win some games it shouldn't. And that was one of them. Barely. What was it? 37 to 33. I think yeah. they go home and say no to a division rival. I, I think it'll be close, your basic North headbanger game. But I think in the end that the, the, the home standing now Ravens, I think they'll win this game 24 to 21. Uh, I'm with you. I will. I will tell you this with Giovanni Bernard and the way that he's been oh. playing along with Jeremy oh. Hill, more so Bernard than Hill. They've got the fourth-ranked rushing attack in the uh, NFL right now. And, and Andy Dalton, I'm not going to sit there and completely excoriate him. He's no scrub. He's completing about 68% of his passes, Skip. He hasn't thrown an interception yet, and his, and his, and his quarterback rate is like 120. i got to give respect where respect is due and say that Andy Dalton is playing some pretty damn f f good football and Hugh Jackson must be doing a good job with him. But being in Baltimore, knowing how desperate they are, it's going to be a playoff caliber atmosphere up there this week. And in my estimation, it's not something that Andy Dalton usually responds to. So I got to give the edge to the Ravens. But again, it's more heart than head because Cincinnati is clearly the better team right now. We're going with Baltimore here, but this should be a fun one. Looking forward to this matchup here. This one as well. Cam is back, and the Seahawks are now heavy favorites versus the Bears. But how many points will they win by? That's just one of the games in our quick pick segment. We're picking the rest of them after the break. For NFL Week 3 quick takes, let's get right to it, guys. Bears travel to face the Seahawks. Still uncertain if Cam Chancellor will play. 
Skip, what will the final score be mm, in this one? As in, how bad will it get? Mm. Stephen A., I, I feel like it's unfair and unrealistic for people to leap to the conclusion that Cam Chancellor, just by presence alone, will be the savior of this football team. As Molly said, not sure how much he will participate. They said he looks to be in great shape. He's going to have to somewhat play his way into game shape. But I look at what the Bears are bringing to that outdoor asylum, the 12s, as they say. Jimmy Clausen with no Alshon Jeffrey now? Are you kidding me? And they haven't had Kevin White, who I thought was going to be a rookie difference maker for this team. They haven't had him all year, obviously. I, I just I can't make a single bit of case for the visiting team, the Chicago Bears. So I'm going to say it's 30 to 6. I think you're being entirely too kind. I think it's going to be a complete annihilation. I'm going to make the score something along the lines of 37 to 8. And that's only with a late score by Chicago making it look like they did a little something at some juncture. They will be completely annihilated this Sunday afternoon. Next question. <laughs> you're probably right. So we have a lot of confidence in the Bears here. All right, Chargers at Vikings. Skip, who you got? You know, Mike Zimmer made the case this week, Stephen A., that Phillip Rivers is an all-time great quarterback, and sometimes he is. He doesn't have any hardware to show for it, as in no rings, no real trophies in his trophy case. But you know what? Maybe Mike Zimmer is right this week. I think Phillip Rivers will be very good at Vikings. I I'm going to go with the visiting Chargers. I can't figure them out, but they have the capability to beat a Vikings team that I'm still not completely sold on, even though they've had their moments so far this year. So I, I'm going to go 24 to 21 visiting Chargers. Look, they got Steve Johnson, they've got Keenan Allen, and they've got Phillip Rivers, who's completing, I think it's like 81% of his passes. Skip, he's, 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 he's completed 56 of 69 passes thus far this year. And I'm looking at Minnesota, and I'm just not sold on their ability to score the ball. So I'm going to go with you, and I'm going to pick the Chargers, the visiting team in this game. I think they're going to win somewhere along the lines of 27 and 19. San Diego right. on the road. Let's go NFC South now. Skip. Wow. Saints at Panthers. Stephen A., I, I'm going to guess... I'm going to assume that Drew Brees will try to play in this game. We're still not sure he's saying that he's going to do everything in his power to play. And we know he's a tough guy. We know he's got a bruised rotator cuff. I I'm going to say he guts it out and tries to play. And as we spoke of earlier, a Jairus Bird is returning at safety on Rob Ryan's defense. And Keenan Lewis is returning at corner. So that should help some. But as we spoke yesterday, Talk about not sold. I, I think the Saints in general are on their way down, even though Luke Keekley is probably out with the concussion for the home team, the Panthers. I just think Cam Newton and company, it's a division game. I, they're, they're all close, but, but I, I just have to go with the Panthers here, 21-17. Well, listen, I think that their defense is playing well, albeit their first couple of games. I think it was against Jacksonville and Houston. In the end, they've got the number two defense in football right now. I think uh, Rivera's got them headed in the right direction on the defensive side of the ball. Offensively, I'm quite shocked at what I'm seeing from Cam from an offensive standpoint, only completing about 53% yep. of his passes. But then again, when Ted Ginn is your number one wide out, yep. you know you've got a problem. But I think it speaks to how pathetic I think the Saints are this year. I think Cam, Cam Newton and the Panthers win this game at home. I'm going to pick them to win 22-16. Carolina, it is. Luck in the Colts against Mariota in the Titans. Skip. Oh, it's, it's Andrew Luck. I mean, He's he has lock. to finally win one game, right? This has got to be a Luck lock. It's got to be. Him. Come on, 24-17 to against Mariota. Um, I think they're going to put up more points than that. I think Colts are going to score about 31 in this. I think they're going to win like 31 to 20. Real fast, San Francisco, Arizona. San Francisco, Arizona. I got the home team 30 to 17. Stephen A. I'm rolling with, Ari I'm rolling with Arizona 27-20. All right. I love it. Looking forward to this week. I it's feel like gonna we're going to know a lot more after week three. I hope so. You guys with me? Stephen A., stay out of that traffic. I'm stay good. safe there in NYC. Y'all enjoy y'all weekend. All, All right. right. Have a great weekend. Thanks for being with us.